Today I'm going to show you how to do what's called knockout text. This is where you have one word and then you knock out or remove portions of it. See where it's kind of broken in here? Let me zoom in even closer. So that white area is where I sliced or broke the word grandma so that we could inset the grandchildren's names. That's called a knockout. So let me show you how we achieve this. I'm going to turn this one off. And first we're going to start by entering text. And I'm going to do my cap locks on and type the word grandma. You can see the last text I was using was all kinds of fancy. So we're going to go up here and we are going to use, it's called um, Cooper. I picked this font just because it's a nice bold font. You can fit, pick a different font, but I just want to show you exactly what I used. So I'm going to unlock it because I want to have a lot of space to be able to slice this whole thing for th or through. So I want to make sure I make this nice and tall. So I'm going to unlock this. That allows me to stretch it and make it taller. I found using a width of 10 inches and a height of 3 inches worked really nice. Again, you can play with this. I'm going to lock this back up so that I don't distort things. Um, you can play with this and adjust it for your own needs, but this has just work worked for me. I'm now going to click on this and change the color to be a blue. I like to do this so that when I'm working on the project, I can see my layers more easily instead of having everything in black and shades of gray. Okay, so that's our grandma. Now we need the names of the grandkids that we're gonna overlay into this. So that we're gonna type up some text and there's some special characters we wanna use to get the little flourishes on the end and the cute little heart in the center. So we are gonna start with a left bracket, then the name was Katie, so I typed that, then an underscore, then Thomas, and then a closing bracket. Now I typed it up in this font just so you can see the actual text and characters I'm using. But now when we go here and click on fonts, and we change this to I love glitter, you'll see what happens. See how it changed the bracket and the underscore to these fun little flourishes? Um, so that's the font you want to use is called I Love Glitter. I will link my full written out tutorial so you have the names of the fonts I used and also links of where you can download them and then also a tutorial that shows you how to install them onto your device. It'll all be in the handwritten tutorial. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get these layers to touch so that it's all one continuous line of text. So with some fonts, you can use the letter spacing and move things together. It makes them touch real nice. But for I Love Glitter, it gets some of the letters touching, like the K8 look pretty good, and right over here, this area looks good, but you can see there's still gaps in other areas. So what I like to do is ungroup. Ungroup makes it so that each letter is an individual letter, and you're not working with a line of text anymore. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see this better. So. What we want to do is weld these together so they cut in one continuous line. Since the S and this little flourish seem to be touching just fine, I'm going to weld those so I have that done. I'm going to click on the S and hold the shift key and then click on just this little flourish and weld that. Now I'm going to scooch the S over to the A and actually 
if I scooch both of these over, that might work pretty good. Now, I want to show you why I like to work just on a, one name at a time versus just welding this whole darn thing together. If I click on the T, hold down my shift key, hit the H, O, M, A, and S over here on my layers panel. That allows me to really isolate which ones I'm selecting. If I would have tried to do that over here, I might have accidentally clicked the heart and I wasn't ready to weld him in. So now I'm going to go align and align to the bottom. And that moved everything so it lined up perfectly. And now I can weld the entire Thomas at once. Now you might say, Sean, why didn't you just do that and weld everything at, at the whole thing? Let me show you. Katie has an E in it and E's are sometimes problematic. So I'm going to do the same trick of selecting things over here. And I'm going to weld. Oh, no. First I want to align to the bottom. There we go. Now I'm going to weld. You see how the E filled in on the Katie? Okay, we don't want that. So let's undo. And now I'm just going to select the K-A-T-I and weld those. Because I know that the E is the one that's problematic. So if I just scooch this whole thing over just a hair, there was some part of this eye that was going inside the loop of the E. And even though it didn't look like it, it was doing it just a little bit. So now if I select these and align to the bottom, let's see if I got my E in a good position. There. See how that worked so nice? Now, so it took a little bit more time, but I didn't have that E filling in. So then that was nice. So that's how I like to work in sections. And now that I have all of those, I can align all of those to the bottom and weld all of them together. So I have to do this again for the second row of names, but since it's the same process, just different names, I'm going to pause my recording and come back once I have that text ready to go. Now that I have both lines of text all ready to go, I'm going to make a big window around them to select them. And I'm going to change their color to the it was kind of a purplish pink that I was using. So now I have my layers ready to go. And what I need to do now is add an offset. That offset is going to be the shadow so that I can um, slice that out of the grandma. So I'm going to start with the Katie and Thomas. And I'm going to select offset. And I found that a distance of 0 0.05 was a nice distance. Right now, the Cricut Design Space software is thinking. It's kind of got to go around that whole outline and put together the offset. I can tell it's doing that because I see the little green line going across there. So that's why I'm just going to be patient and wait. So once this kind of generates an offset, I'll be able to see a line around, there it goes, around Katie and Thomas. And that's my offset. If you would like to adjust this, you can either slide this little bar or change the number here. But for this project, because I just want a tight shadow offset, I found that 0 0.05 was a good number. And now I'm going to click apply. I'm not sure why sometimes offset will isolate around one portion, but I just deleted the offset. Let's just try it again. It does take some time to generate, but that's because the shape is, is big. Okay. Let's hit apply. There it did it. So you can see that black layer is the offset. 
I'm now going to do the same thing for John and Alex. Okay, so next we're going to have to position these over the word grandma. Because I'm going to want to move them, I want to them to stay together. So like the Katie and Thomas, I want both of those lines to stay together. So I'm going to group them. Group allows me to move these as one piece. Let me show you. If I click on this now, it moves it all as one big piece. If I would have just clicked on this, see how I was able to separate them? Don't worry, I can just click undo and put it back. Okay, so now I want to group so that I can keep them together. And I'm going to move the John and Alex down here and Katie and Thomas. Let's put them right there. Okay. So now the next part is to slice and remove the black portion of the, which is the offset from the grandma. So then it gives that little space or border. Okay, so if I click on this, right now it won't let me slice because, um, well, I have to select grandma too. Okay, so I only want to select the black part because I want to slice the black from the blue. So if I click over here on the layers panel, I'm able to select just the black. If I select here, I selected the whole grouping. I don't want to select the group, I just want to select and slice out the black. An even better way to do this is if I click on this grouping and I turn off using the eyeball, totally turn off the purple. Let's do that for this one too. I'm going to turn off the purple. Now I won't even see it. So I won't get confused by it. So I want grandma and the first black. You can only have two things selected. That's why you can't slice everything at once. So now I'm going to go slice. It's got to think. Okay. So now I'm going to select grandma and let's do it this way. Okay. Black and grandma. So I'm holding my shift key so that I can select just the black piece and the grandma. Okay because otherwise it would have had me pick up other things possibly, and we don't want to do that. Okay, so now there's all kinds of stuff back here I have to delete, but it's really hard to see. If I go up here to this top layer, which is the grandma layer, I can turn that off. All of this that is left over is everything I want to delete. Now I have a blank screen. That's okay. Turn grandma back on, and then come down here and turn on the different layers that you um, were hiding to make your slicing easier. That's your project. It's done. The only thing you would have to do now is when you click make it, you will either mirror this because it's going on a shirt, or my little tip is to take the whole thing and you can flip it. So now that I flipped it horizontally, I don't have to remember to mirror it. Ooh, one last little tip. So when we cut this, if we want to keep Katie and Thomas positioned exactly how they are over the John and Alex, click over here so that we select the John and Alex, hold the shift key, get Katie and Thomas, and attach. Attach holds the placement and position of different things in relation to each other. So now that I've attached them, they're going to stay perfectly like that. So I hope this tutorial helped you to understand how to use offset, slice, group, attach, weld, and also your flip. Oh, we also use a line. We learned so many things with this one tutorial. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. 
Leave me a comment below of how you'd use this project and make sure to subscribe so you get notifications for all of my new tutorials. Thanks!